question is that Kwekumen, first he said, first he said, Kwekumen with James. Would that was said, or Judas. So now KMD is Kwekumen with Judas. Yes. So in case you are lost. continue sharing, okay? Okay, Kwekumen with Judas. We like you like that. We like that name. Hey, the way he paid him yesterday. He paid him. Yesterday I called him on TV and said, hey, Rosie, why don't you call Kwekumen with Judas? Well, that's your name. Kwekumen with Judas. So that is that good one. Has to come in to stay. Okay. Anyway, so um, yes. let's introduce our guest. Yes, it's time for us to introduce our guest. Let's do ladies first. Yes, ladies let's do it. first. Mm -hmm. Ladies first. So um, our first guest, uh, she was here. Um, she was here last week, um, or about two weeks ago. Yes. Nanama Echampon, who is a relationship coach. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How you're are looking you? good. Thank you. You're, you're looking, looking good. You're looking Christmassy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 I'm very oh, interested yeah. in the KMJ name. Ah, oh, Kwekumenu Judas. Kwekumenu yes. Judas. Yes. Kwekumenu <laughs> Judas. Interesting. Yeah. And she's looking like Bonya Koko. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Wait, wa wa so say you better not be young crack crank coin. Hello. And moving on to you our next guest. Away. You cannot throw me away. Like, I'm just stuck this with you. what God has given to you. You better carry this cross. <laughs> moving on to our next guest, Reverend Juliet Boche, FOJ Ministries, FOJ Foundation. Oh, okay. Yes. And, and, and you know, this year she actually awarded Christian Woman. Yes. And I was so excited yeah. about it. I, I yeah. should have been there, but yeah. unfortunately mm -hmm. I couldn't make you it. You couldn't make it. Yes. And you know, the funny thing, you were the one who did that interview. Yes. And you said it on air that, that you would be there. Yeah. And but she I had didn't an come. Mm -hmm. I had an emergency. And so when I saw her this morning, <laughs> I prostrated <laughs> on the floor. And you asked for yes. forgiveness. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Rev, good morning. Oh, nice Welcome. meeting you again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. to be here. Mm. We're it's excited to see you. Yeah. We can't wait to hear your thoughts, on, I mean, your opinions on the topic yeah. that we're about to discuss. Okay. Yeah, so do my best. Mm. <laughs> I can hear. And our new guest, he's no stranger to uh, Let's Talk Relationships. He's half cast. He's <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think Rosie has already done the introduction. So, Prophet Echo Daniel, who is the founder of Raw Time Ministries International. Mm. Uh, it's very prophetic. Very, very prophetic. Very prophetic. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, he's, he's Prof. Half cast. <laughs> I'm really it. Are you not half cast? Uh, I, I think I qualify too. Yeah, you do. You do. You really do. Only your Bernie here today. <laughs> Is it about the topic? Me. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. The topic? Yeah. Navigating societal expectations. The role of a pastor's wife. Me, I have so many questions. <laughs> I have so many questions because, I mean, I've been hearing quite a number of things. Rosalind also has very interesting things to say. To say. But first off, I want you to help us understand who... A pastor's wife. Since is. you were a pastor's wife. Since you were a pastor's wife. Okay, so. <clears throat> <laughs> and I'm at celebrating so, the 10th anniversary. <clears throat> when? Was it this year or last year? 13th. 13th, 13th anniversary. Yes. Fantastic. When I was marrying my husband, he wasn't a pastor. But I knew he would be eventually. Oh, wow. Mm, yes. So a pastor's wife is basically a woman who is married to a pastor. Is a pastor's wife. As simple as that. There is no special acronyms to add to it. And um, we find them in our, in, in our churches most of the time. And we call them mommy because we see the pastor as a father figure. And we see the mommy as a spiritual mother, mother. to the spiritual mm. father. Mm. So basically, that's who a pastor's wife is. We have quite a number of gospel musicians who um, they call them osofo because of the ministry that they are in and all that. And then we, we end up hearing some people call their wives of mommy as well. But you don't see them stand, you know, behind pulpits to preach. All they do is to be singing gospel musicians. I mean, gospel songs. Do they not qualify to be called as pastors or for their wives to be called pastors' wives as well? Is there any question? Yeah. Too? Prophet Daniel. Prophet Daniel. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, a very good morning to 
our viewers and a good morning to my wife, uh, Lady Sheila Daniels That's a good and one. my children. <laughs> uh, hello, your Daniels and all the Royal Time Ministry family. God bless you. Um, so it, it, it's a call, right? The, yeah. the pastor's wife thing. You need to be called to be a pastor's wife. It's a calling. It, it's not a choosing. Ah. Yes. And so the fact that you're a gospel musician doesn't make you a pastor's wife. You understand, or maybe you are married, married to, to a, a gospel. Mm -hmm. You're married to who? a gospel musician, but people are identifying him as a sofo, mm. a pastor, mm. because he sings gospel songs. Mm. And anytime he sings, yeah, literally, you feel the Holy Spirit and everything. So it, it's a ministry, okay. right? And he who sings a gospel song, I mean, let, let me qualify it even better the gospel of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ's songs. Mm. Because gospel is just good news. It doesn't mean it belongs to Jesus. Okay. And so anyone who sings that song, it, it doesn't necessarily make that person a pastor's wife. It, it's a whole ministry on its own, and, and it's a beautiful one for that matter. Okay. Oh, okay, so let, let, let me put it like this. So for you, Rev, your husband is a pastor as well, and um, this pastor's wife and being a pastor too is it mandatory that once you marry a pastor you ought to be a pastor too okay so that's an interesting uh, point and it's always been a source of confusion uh, in actual fact let's see i've been in ministry like almost 40 years yes and uh, you mean headed, 40 years yes oh, wow and headed I'm in ministry. She, she has <laughs> seven children? Yes, How beautiful I do. She is. Wow. Five boys, yeah. two girls. Yeah. So, so you got seven? Yes. Yeah. So I just look wow. the way God wants me to yeah. look. <laughs> and it's a lot of effort in a way. But what I'm trying to say is, like, I've, I've led a lot of women networks and had the privilege of being set with certain women like uh, Mama Ida Hosa. They mentor me, actually. Okay, and okay. then uh, Laduna Osborne. Mm. I, I mean, these are the women I work with. And so I've seen these things. We go for conferences, and it's always a, an issue for discussion. Now, to be precise, in Ghana, we say Sofu Mami. Yes. And then we have Mami Sofu. Mm. And, and, and there's Do you Asafu understand Mami that? too? Uh -huh. oh, okay. So uh, normally, the Asafu Mami is what they are trying to say, Sofu Mami. OK. But the whole thing is asafuni ni na ne ma me. Okay. So what he has here is just right. like the first lady of Ghana. Mm, yes. Once the man becomes the president, he is not. Yes. She is not the president, but she's the president's wife. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and of course, with that comes some amount of responsibilities, mm. and which you must be trained for. Okay. Because you can't just marry a man of a certain profile and behave anyhow. Yeah because you have a part to play in making whatever he's doing successful. Mm. So Asafo Mami, or Sofo Mami, as we see it, is a different thing. It doesn't necessarily mean the person is a pastor, but the Mami Sofo is the one who is the pastor. Sometimes you find the two in one. That is mm. female... Uh, minister. Minister. Exactly. Okay, Sometimes you, you find the two in one. Mame sofu, sofu mame, especially when you come to the charismatic side. But when you go to the orthodox side, it's well defined. Okay. Yeah. If you go there, there's a female who is a minister there. The husband is not working there. Mm. He's doing another thing. He's a surveying department mm -hmm. or something, something. Mm -hmm. You understand that? So you can't force him. They call him as a full papa. Like they give that respect to him as the pastor's wife. In this case, it will be a male. Yeah, so the pastor's husband. husband, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that correction. You see, so in that, and the whole thing is not blown out of proportion. It's only that women issues is always blown Both out yeah. of proportion. Yeah. 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 Since you were a pastor, mm -hmm. did you know that you marry a pastor? Well, for me, uh, from the beginning, I was in the Catholic Church before I had my call. You see, okay. coming, there's some few things that is going on because with charismatism, you know. It's traveling, it's mm -hmm. journey. Mm. Charismatism in Ghana hasn't matured yet. Okay. You have the Orthodox that he's been here like 120, 200 yeah. years. Yeah. It's established. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I like that word. So many things have been put in place. Charismatic is still 
progressing. So there are a lot of things that are going on that will later on be understood and be put in its proper perspective. Mm -hmm. So for me in person, when I was going, uh, when I had my call, I was already doing the ministry okay. before I met the man to marry. And in fact, one of the things a Pentacles elder told was like, oh, why am I who to me? Oh, wow. And that is where society and culture and religious attitude comes in. But let me ask you this again. Mm -hmm. As a minister of God at that time, mm -hmm. if you hadn't married a pastor, would something have changed? Well, you see, for Ghana, the settings, mm -hmm. many things, the mindsets of people, become, it becomes very difficult for them to accept certain things, which we have to change and look at three things in its right perspective mm -hmm. so that people can function properly, you see. Because for me, uh, at that time, I wasn't, I don't think I was really prepared to be with a pastor. Oh. Because in, in fact, I used to be in the Catholic Church and I wanted to be a Roman sister. Mm. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Seven oh, yeah, for the battle, for the battle, yeah, for the battle, will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and all those, my mates, they know. Go to Mota, they know. So, they get shocked. Oh, you who wanted to be a Roman <laughs> sister, here yeah, you are with seven 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 children. Children. <laughs> You know, it's an interesting thing. So, what I'm saying is that if I had my own way at that time, with the culture and the religious beliefs and things, uh, I would have slowed down a little bit. Oh. Yes, because I would have acquired certain knowledge, more knowledge to do things in a different way. You get my mm -hmm. point. Uh -huh. So with uh, culture, societal, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, beliefs mm -hmm. and all those religious beliefs, they, they don't mind you, religious beliefs are not spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are not spiritual. Mm -hmm. Being spiritual mm -hmm. is just walking in the word. That is how I see it. Being spiritual is just walking in the word. So there's no need for you, you, you know, religious uh, beliefs are set ups that man himself has made. And for, don't forget that the church is full of men, the men. The hierarchy is yeah, there. Yeah, so they the put a whole lot of laws there, there. Yeah. and then you have to follow suit. And for the women, I think it's time the women take certain positions and make certain uh, pragmatic, uh, what do you call it? Um, how do I? Uh, oh, we are coming. We are coming. You are coming. Yeah. Okay, you we want to be there. Yeah. Uh, okay, we are waiting <laughs> for you. <laughs> oh, we need to take some steps that are realistic. Yeah. yeah. That can make us do the right thing mm. and have positive impact on society and the church. Okay. okay. So, right. Prophet Ako, before meeting your wife, mm. uh, what were some of the things that you were looking out for in choosing a woman who would work with you, knowing that you were going to, you know, be a pastor or you were going to start doing ministry? Uh, thank you, my sister. So I never knew I'd be a man of God. I've said that <laughs> countless times. And I wasn't even born a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So being a Muslim and a traditional oh. person, I, I never thought a day would come that I would have to preach to people. Yeah. But I disliked the prophet. So it was out of my, my uh, the transition from being mad to sanity. That's when I met my wife as a friend oh. who gave me hope, you know, that, listen, it's not, it's not over for you. You know, I had gone through a lot of stuff mm. prior to the call of God. You know, the call of God is heavy. So prior to that, that transition, when everybody had left me, my wife, at the time, um, a friend was there. You know, so she encouraged me and she was like, because they, they took me from Accra to Mankissim. Then she encouraged me to come back. She said, why, why are you staring at me like that? How do you want to do the same thing? No, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, my coming back mm. was just more of, okay, I have, I have a friend that I can uh, talk to. Yeah. At least not everybody has despised me because a lot had happened. Then she took me to church, you know. So my wife knew she would marry a man of God. She knew. My wife knew. Well, was it that she wanted to marry a man of God or she knew? No, because my wife has always been a church lady. Yeah. Or a church yeah. girl. So, so, so there, was, there was a prophecy on her life. And she, she believes marry. in prophecy mm -hmm. okay. that she would end up marrying a man of God. Okay. And a prophet for that matter. Okay. My wife sees very well. Okay. My wife sees very well. So... When I met my wife in my destitution, she saw behind that. 
Okay. Wow. So your wife is also a prophetess? Yes, my wife can really prophesy. Okay. It's amazing when she's prophesying. Did you discover this prophetic gift after you married her? Did As hers? As hers. Yes. Was it discovered after the marriage? No, so when I met her as a friend at a time, she used to tell her. me prophetic stuff. But, but you know, I, I, because I wasn't a Christian really, and I, I wasn't even a prophet, but I was born a prophet, I was finding it difficult to sort of accept that whole, every day my wife is prophesying to me. You did, know, did you see her as a prophet at that time, a prophetess at that time? That's what I'm saying, that because I was now transitioning mm. to come into a belief system that's true for me, in, initially it was difficult as, as friends. You know, but when we got married, then I accepted, okay, this, this woman sees. In fact, I used <laughs> to consult my wife to prophesy. Okay. In the beginning of my prophecies. So if I see something or hear something, I will check with my wife, like, you know, I this just person, saw this, I just yeah. heard this. Is this how it works with you people? Mm. You know, does it make sense? Then she would explain to me and then help me. You know, funny enough, when I took over, then her stabilized. You, you understand? Ah. Yes. Yeah, so she knew she would marry a man of God. And then now, also by prophetic, I know that I was supposed to end up with someone like that. Mm. You, you understand? So... Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful when the coercion is there yeah. and the understanding is there. However, like I said before, it's a call and it needs a lot of orientation and even the understanding of socialization because that's a very sensitive place to be. You cannot be everybody. You cannot do what people, normal yeah. people are doing. Yeah. And so for, for my wife, she always knew. And everything my wife told me in my first year of walking with her, they are manifesting. Everything, every one of them is manifest. <laughs> my wife told me about my today. Mm. Oh, right. What will happen with you, where you will go, what you'll be doing, you know, how life will be for you. And at the time, we're very poor. I met my wife three months after I married her. Oh, you married oh, her wow. three months after? Yes, three months after, oh. uh, just before That's meeting my wife, I married her. Okay. Yeah, because I just knew at the time, I was a new person spiritually. I just knew this is the right person to marry. Okay. You understand? Mm. Because of one or two, three things she said that gave me hope, you know, so... You just knew you would be I just knew okay this. with this person. Yes, yes. It wasn't even about... Now, because we had nothing, so it yeah. wasn't about anything. It was just purpose yeah. and vision yeah. and where we are going, mm. you know, so that was just why I married. That's great. Mm. Then I, you have been also for mommy for a while. Asa mm. for mommy. Mm. And, um, <laughs> you know... I like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Walk us through the journey of I'm Asa for mommy. Okay, so as a pastor's wife, you are supposed to help your husband build the church. Um, sometimes that aspect or that role comes with a calling because everybody is here for a purpose. And so in as much as you are helping your husband to build his ministry, you might also have a role to play. Some is to manage. So some people are, man some, some pastor, some pastor um, wives are managers, so they, 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 best, they, are, they best work well in, in a management position. So most of the time, if, a, if the pastor is very smart, he allows his wife to be underground and manage the church. So she will manage the various departments, okay. the various um, the, the groups that, that, that and everything. One, eh? That one, and and then, let me ask you this. Hey, mm -hmm. some master for mommy say, when they are managing, Hey, when they see girls come to the church, hey, what are you wearing? Hey, katana, <laughs> hey. I'm not so, lying. Yeah, yeah. And so, it causes a lot of problems in the church yes, sometimes, right? Yes, yes. So, because you see, the, the girls are coming. You know, they now now the girls that come to church, the way they dress is crazy. But also, so for my business, you know, I use bombastic side. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The bombastic side. Because I know I'm a Asa for mommy who mm -hmm. actually asked a certain lady, why does my husband pray for you all the time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that has to do that has to do with character. <laughs> so in as much as she has a role to play, she's a human being, and 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 being a human being, she has her character. So and sometimes people have insecurities. Okay, so it depends on how the husband. And then another one, maybe there might be a history. Okay, so, so space of that managing. That's why that's church. why Rev will say that you need to go to school. Mm. It's either you need to 
um, and take it's yourself strange. through yeah. your own personal mm -hmm. schooling. Mm -hmm. And you also have to allow other people to train you. And you also need a mentor. It's not only in the part where I am doing business, so I need a mentor, I need a bank manager to look up to. No, being the role of an as of a mommy is a ministry, it's a work, mm. yeah. it's a kingdom business. So you need to grow in it, you need to mature in it. So it's better to also get a mentor, okay? So you look around, there are a lot of reverend min ministers who are quite old enough who would help you through it but here is a case where they think that the sofa mommy is a a a, 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 a statue it's a crown to wear you know and Mama. and and haha <laughs> so Mama. now they think that they are the bosses but you are rather a servant not a boss oh you know you are rather a servant mm -hmm. not a boss you are there to serve and there's there will be circumstances where people will call your husband at 12 o'clock and you're supposed to allow it you are supposed to allow it in the sense that your husband wasn't called for you. It's like the president of Ghana. Ghana can call our president at any time. And Mama Rebecca can't say anything because for a certain period of time, you have renegated your husband's life to the church. Mm. So, so, so I, I, yeah. I, I, mean, I don't think at this point, I want to, I'm, I'm having second thought, you know, hours of prayers to it. So that you know, you imagine, you, or not. you know, imagine, <laughs> imagine somebody is dying at 12 p.m. Oh, imagine, or somebody has 12 a serious, uh, 12, 12 a.m. Yeah. yeah, 12 a.m. or midnight. And imagine that the person needs prayer immediately. You can't mm. say, I want my husband to lie no, about me for me to go like cozy so different. you can't go. A scenario like that is different. You can have some, you know, yeah. church ladies who are quite, you know, some way exactly. and would purposely mm. be I mean, interrupting. Four, four certain... at midnight. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what happens is that the man of God also needs because, discipline. Because if you are and you just needs go to hospital, a level somewhere. of. Uh, 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 I, I don't. I what think do uh, what she's saying is beautiful. You have sacrificed your life for yes. the church. Yes. But the pastor needs to be managed. Yes. Mm. You see, for me, that's realistic. That's because you can burn out too. Yes. And a lot of pastors are even fainting, yes. dying. Yeah. yeah. Because you can't just say, God has called me, so spirit, they work. Yeah. And just the room, 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 yeah. do everything. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. You must be managed. And like you are saying, the woman, the pastor's wife, her role is not to manage everything in the church. That is not what she's called to. That expectation is too much. Mm. Because maybe you are not even equipped. You don't have even patience to manage no, children. I, I wasn't so, done. No, no. no. Yes. I, I, I wasn't go done. I like that before. <laughs> Wait, I mean, I wasn't <laughs> done telling you because there are different types of okay. as of so okay. we are, As I said, we have, the, we have the manager and we have the one that it supports the husband. Okay. So it's just the... Um, Praying for the church, quiet. We have the, the quiet one. But society and does not agree with that. Have, uh, you see, the perception we have, you see, the topic you raised was the perception and the yeah. societal expectations. expectations. Yeah. So what you are seeing, the one who is uh, operating supportively, so even for the first ladies, there were different types of mm -hmm. first ladies. One president's first, uh, wife was on the forefront. Another president's wife was just behind. Yeah. And supporting him from yeah. the back. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, so it's not always that first lady that is always at the, beside the man, all over the place. So you are right. But you see, there's a caution that we need to caution ourselves here. Mm. With ministers, you see, this work is very stressful. Mm. Talking and standing alone is a whole lot. It's like giving speech all the time. Mm. And then the mental agony you go through handling people's cases, like the lawyer. You are doing law work, you are doing medical work, you are doing, you know, people are sick, you have yeah. to pray and yeah. make sure they are healed. Yeah. You people have cases that somebody has stolen their property, you have to pray mm -hmm. and believe God for them to restore. Mm -hmm. So you are doing the work of a lawyer, they are doing the work of an accountant, mm. praying for people to get money and multiply their monies. A whole lot of so weight. You are doing the work of a mother as <laughs> and well. And a mother. So, so much goes on for the pastor. So the pastor's wife wrote, like she's saying, you need to be trained. You have to know when to come in and when to stay, stay out. Back, yeah. For your own mental sanity. Ah. You can't carry it all and do everything. Then the expectation of you have to push your man, you have to push your man. Look, one thing I have seen, I've seen pastor's wives that died. 
some are mentally off. If I should tell you some of the high-profile ministers whose wives had to even go for, uh, uh, what do you call it, go and therapy. stay with people, therapy too. And that's the sad part. Hmm. Where I was right in, was it 98, I hosted Mama Ida Hosa. And after the program, there was this particular pastor's wife. She, kept, she was older than me then. She kept talking, hey, my husband is weak. My husband is weak. That was what she kept talking. And she was so anointed. So I, I didn't get it. Do you know that I told my husband, I said, look, we need to go and look for this woman the next day. When we got there, she was in the fridge. Oh. Oh. She was in the morgue, as we say. So for us, the person was trying to voice out certain things that she can't manage. But as a for mommy and this high expectation mm. of doing this, doing that, uh, fighting for this, the mom must have this, and your children must do this. It, it's a whole it's lot. It's too much. Please. The society is just like the president's wife. Mm. But you see, the president's wife has a lot of help. A yeah. lot of help. Yeah. And he's being paid for. Mm. But, but the see, church doesn't see, understand you see the thing that. Is, is it not the men mm. that you make your wives like that? Because like I said, if, if my husband ever decides to become a pastor, hallelujah, that day I will wear a gown that will probably like six inches that will be on the floor. But hello, I'm not being, uh, you know, what they want me to be. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I will, will be me. Be you. This is me, yeah. Rosalind. Yeah. You know, I'll support you as you are my husband. You are the head of the home. You are a pastor. You've been called. But don't expect me to be that kind of Woman what of God, woman of pastor, God? Pastor you know, I have to wake up, and you know, oh, if I if I can't, I can't. hello, <laughs> my husband has told him that. Hey, what if, I, if you go, it's okay. I me, mean, I support you. That, that day, I went for later. My first later will be here. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't okay. party, I'm going to party. <laughs> but you see. The men, sometimes, I feel mm. there's competition amongst yourselves as pastors. Yeah, exactly. Trying to make sure that my wife is equal to this person's wife. Yeah. Even in looks. Lately, the looks has become something else. Oh, it's it's a like whole fashion everybody industry. has to be beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Everybody has to have a body. Yeah. Everybody's, every pastor's wife has to, you know, be a, a pastor too or prophesy too. It is, I, so, I so um, you see, uh, charity begins at home. Mm -hmm. And your first ministry as a man of God is your family, yeah. your really? immediate family. That's why I'm, I'm a family person. My wife, my yes. children, I don't trade them for anything. Mm -hmm. if, if that place has a problem, I can't help anybody. Yes. So you need to stamp authority as a man of the house, of the home, and then it extends to the ministry. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, clear you see, your wife must truly understand who you are from the beginning. The, the issues normally happen when, for example, like Rosalind was saying, I didn't marry you as a man of God. Yeah. I didn't know you become a man of God. Mm. Along the line, you become a man of God. That's a different ballgame. And mm. that ministry of Asafu Mami is a big deal. It's seriously difficult. Mm. So that whole transition... If they had no idea, especially the woman, if she had no idea, I'm telling you, it will be crisis. Mm. Because then she doesn't want to understand purpose. She doesn't understand the assignment. Yeah. She doesn't understand her role. Yeah. She doesn't know anything that's going on. Then she, become, she becomes competitive because she also becomes insecure. She wants her husband. At the same time, she wants to you know, send off people who are coming, especially women, coming close to the husband. But you see, when so you... So for these days, you have to fear the men too. <laughs> yes, 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 of course. No, it's because, it's because of the question. I have to fear the men. You understand? It's because of the question she's asking. So you said they should be sacking the women. And I said these days, both men. No, I didn't, say, I didn't say they should be sacking the women. I'm saying that she's asking a question, right? And I'm saying that in address... My is not catching my drift. <laughs> no, see, in, in address to that, mm -hmm. you have to stamp your authority as a man. As a man. And present yourself <laughs> who you really are to your wife. When your wife understands your core values, your core principles, she understands foundationally who, foundationally who you are. Yeah. Then you also assess your wife. There's pros and cons. Basically, you, can, you, would, you would borrow SWOT analysis into your family. What's my wife's strength? What's my wife's weaknesses? What can she do and what can she not do? You sit down and you discuss it. You talk about it. You understand. Your wife, to an extent, will understand those foundations. Then the rules are clear. 
My manager was chosen for me by my wife. My team was chosen, most of them are chosen by my wife. You understand? So I understand, my wife is very good at discerning, for example, who a bad person is. You understand? So you must know who your wife is. Make that understanding in the home first. Let it work in the home. Give her that sense of trust and believe in the assignment and in the purpose. You understand? It's not as easy as I'm saying, mm. but it's a progress. It's a progressive thing. If the home, normally, when you see competition and, you know, everybody trying to look some way, as you call it, beautiful, mm -hmm. there's a problem in the home, foundationally. The, the problem is coming from the home. They may not be able to tell you or address it to you. How, how is that problem coming from home? Because this, this I'm saying is, is, um, is competition amongst <laughs> pastors. There's no competition in the home. It's amongst pastors. Where, especially, we have a lot of young pastors who, because of the whole trend of pastor, this pastor's wife's body is like this. This pastor's wife is this color. This that is pastor's what I'm wife saying. is... That's it, what I'm saying. Uh, it's the home. For example, I'll give you a no, So they end up marrying women like that. Then they want to change them to become a Safo mommy. <laughs> because I know a pastor who actually prophesied to a beautiful girl, because she's beautiful, and said, you'll be my wife. Uh. Yes, he spoiled her. He told her that I will not change you. You can still be who you are. But once they got married, yeah. things changed. So, so now, now the, the, the question is, is, is on a different tangent. If the man of God is not married and is now getting into marriage to choose an Asafu man, then the orientation of the man must be clear. They, they have spiritual fathers who coach you, who give you an understanding to who you should even settle with. Of course, it's true that people are competing. They want their wives to be, you know, all that. But that is also clearly somebody who doesn't understand their purpose. They are not in for the purpose of God. You, you are not working for yourself. You are working for a deity. Mm. If you understand that premise, I go to places and people ask me, oh, can you prophesy? I'm not mm. in the mood to prophesy. Oh, so there's why no they to to commands, <laughs> why? There's no anointing. Of, even, even, oh, so you know. I, I say today you prophesy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not in and the spirit. Any empire, I'm not in the spirit. Because I'm not in the spirit. The new year, 2024. <laughs> so you see, when, when you are clear as a man what you want, like I'm saying, when I married my wife, we were both poor. We could not afford a three square meal a day mm -hmm. for about eight months. Do you understand? And so w when you become, comp and you see, I, I said before, charity begins at home. Anybody who is insecure, they've always been like that. Mm -hmm. They did not deal with that. They didn't heal. Some people come into marriage with bitterness from their past relationships. Some people are not healed from many issues. Now, the anointing, what it does is that it amplifies you. If you are insecure, it will expose you. Uh, you understand? Okay. If you have trust issues, it will expose uh, 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 you. Uh, the, so the, that, the, that's the, really the problem. It's foundational. Of, there's a lot of stress. Let me, let me come to you, Nana. There's a lot of stress on Asafo Mami. It's like society is expecting you to be something else. For you, maybe you, all, you knew that you marry a pastor, and so you psyched <laughs> yourself into it. But are you sometimes pressured to do things and you feel that... Sometimes I just wish I was just Nanama. Of course, I'm sure the Queen of England, when she was alive, <laughs> had that pressure. Um, every position in life comes with a responsibility. That's right. For instance, Rosling, I'm sure now you can't go to your local wachi seller and go and buy she goes. wachi. Rosling goes. No, she will go because she and has she, she has outside. because oh. she has made her up her mind. That her present position, <laughs> her present position will not. But it gets to a time or a point in time where you can't do what you used to anymore. Yeah. Okay. You can't. For instance, a perfect example would be Ultimi Fatro Tribune. You can, but it, it, it's not like it's an intentional it's something. What we call you know, societal pressure. pressure. No, yeah. it's not. Because what I'm saying is, maybe your present situation can't allow you to. Take the church anymore. Why? Because you are in, maybe you are in a hurry. You need to come to work early. So you need a private car to and move around properly. Will be making, so making what, 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 ha what is happening is that, look, it's like Paul saying in the Bible that this is what a bishop should be like. There's, there are standards for things. 
Okay, so they are the general standards and they are what people expect from you. Mm -hmm. What people expect from you shouldn't be your, your main focus, but the general standards should be, and gradually people will get to understand that this is who you are. This is, this is who you are, because it's not every point in, like every point in time, in as much as we don't have to be selfish, you also have to think about yourself. You also need to do things that would, that would help because at the end of the day, what is the use if you are sick and you are yeah. lying in bed? You know, so there should always be a time where you get time for yourself and reflect. You know, take a pause. There are people who are workaholics. There are, mm. there are suffer mommy who are workaholics too. Mm. You know, so it's just a matter of society is on you, yes, but you also need to pause and think about yourself. Right. You need to understand who you are and what you can do. You are so, only human. So for those of us who understand who we are, this is where the problem is. Can't we just marry ourselves and, or suffer and just be ourselves? Be yourself. Okay. You know, Christianity has progressed. Though. Yeah. 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 You can marry yeah. anybody. Yeah. You can look that flamboyant. No. Your poverty was humility. Mm. <laughs> so you were pulled and were wearing some color shoes and things like that to prove that we knew God. But you see, knowledge is progressive. Yeah. Today you're excited because your charismatism is all around and we yeah. see a lot of change. And for me, I think the church has come a long way. For the charismatism is good. We do a lot of conferences and get the matured people to help us carry us through. But the role of the also for mommy, and there's something important I want to say. For the Asafu Mami and also for Mami, these rules must be defined clearly, mm. especially. The other side, they have done that. For us, it's like the man himself is the one trying to build his, yeah. I guess, his own business mm -hmm. or company. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you need to define. Most uh, Asafu Mami, oh no, Asafu, Asafu Mami, Mami, yes, are in the church. Their roles are not defined. Yeah. And whatever they do, they are not even rewarded. And they've been stopped from going to work. Mm. Who's, who's responsible? So, so at a certain point, when your marriage is having problems, it affects your finances the, and your status and your work. They've stopped working. Oh, yes. They were working in the oh, church. Really? Look, they were working in the church with their husbands. Oh. Right from the scratch. They built the thing. Now, it gets to a certain status, and then uh, issues happen in the marriage. And then it affects your stand in the, in the ministry, which if I was a nurse, if I was a nurse, I'll still be doing my work. Now, now you have to walk out of the church. Wow. I think, you, you, underst you understand? Yeah, I, I understand. Uh -huh. So I think so it's not to advisable define, to leave your work. We need work. to define. No, you see, mommy. but that is what, it depends. When the church is growing, when we are starting, I tell a lot of myself, mommy, for that. Mm -hmm. Please, if your husband is doing something, support him, stand with him. If he's very exposed, intelligent, to help define, this is your role, this is how much we are paying you. Because as a woman, you need to be financially empowered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If not, you can't even show mm -hmm. hospitality and be a blessing to mm -hmm. people. Yeah. You understand that. So if that man does that in the church, because normally he starts the church and yeah. people come in, yeah. and every other person's role is defined, but the also of mommy's role... How does really your wife defined. work? My wife like, works for me. I pay everybody in my church. I, I, I don't believe in anybody in my ministry knows. I don't believe in God bless you. Do you understand? So God will bless everybody. What I do, God is blessing me in different ways. But if the drama, the, everybody in my church, I may not be able to afford what, what, you, 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 uh, what you expect. Or I may not be able to afford exactly what you desire me to pay you, but something to keep you going would come for you. And it's the same across, from my wife to everybody. We don't, I don't call it pay, pay, but there is this, uh, you know, something good to keep you going, you understand? So my wife works for me and then works for the ministry. You see, there are two different entities. I'm different from the ministry. Yeah. Mm. So he works, no, she works for you as a wife or she works for you as a what? You works, are different from the church, but you have your ministry. No, so, no, so, mm -hmm. Echo is different yeah. from raw time ministry. Yes. So the church, we don't run a church, you run we a run ministry. a ministry. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so the ministry is separated from me and it's clearly defined, you understand? So she works for me and the ministry and what she deserves, 
to have, she has it. Because I do other stuff outside ministry. Okay. okay. You understand? Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. all these things are clear. Mm -hmm. You understand? But with, with what we are talking about, there are societal pressures, whether you mm. like it or not. That's mm. the thing. You see, you, you cannot run away from it. Mm. From, that is why most men of God break down, have BPs, yeah. mm. have a lot yeah. of issues that we even cover up for. It's the same with the woman. You see, there, 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 there's something like, if, if you're a public figure, there's so much demand on mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you lead a church and you are the Asafu Mami, there's so much expectations on you. So if your husband, the closest friend, mm. or your immediate family will not help you calm that expectations down, you'll be blown away. Mm. Yeah. This is the reality. You cannot sit here and say, oh, no, hey, but you have to do it like this. And the reality is that there is pressure. Once you begin to gain fame, even if it's not you, the woman, if your husband begins to gain fame, it's directed to you. Yeah. Now there's comparison from the society. Oh, the husband is doing this. Why are you not doing that? So it's the people, <laughs> even family, can bring that pressure up. Like you know. Moses and Osofu. Yeah, you know. Moses, the people were the one who put the pressure yes. on. And then you, so even the members themselves, mm, then yeah. now they, can decide, they can put ideas in your head. Mm. They can now be, begin to create competition. Mm. And there are, there, are, there are ministries who have competition between the man of God and then the wife, who wow. to take the pulpit, yeah. who to preach what. These are the realities, you know, because if you... That's that, that, for the charismatics. No, you see, it's, it's everywhere. You, if no, you because for the Orthodox, you see, my point is for the Orthodox... Orthodox, pastor, orthodox, 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 orthodox in fact, if your husband is a pastor or your mm -hmm. wife is a pastor, they see the two of you as pastors. You can't go back to the Bible school, none of you. I mean, the spouse of the pastor can't go to the Bible mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. and become a double suffolk. No. Okay. Because the thing is that they have branches. Mm -hmm. So if we are re relocating you to a branch and we are re relocating your wife to another branch, it won't work. The family dynamics mm -hmm. won't work. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that one of you have to be the pastor. But when they are ordaining, they will ordain the two of you as pastors, but you will not be a direct pastor. Okay. Your, your, your husband is the pastor. And, you are the and then and you, only you, you won't be the, the assistant. Title. You have the title. Yeah. So you come to church. Yeah. People will come with, to you with your problems because, of course, you're the pastor's wife. Mm. So if they have any issues, they bring. So you counsel them. But to play a major role in I'm managing and for Orthodox, no. no. For Orthodox, they already have the church of elders. Yeah, they have exactly. their everything. See, there, so... Something. That is there. there there's something that we are, we are missing. The there's something that we are missing. So you see, the pressure that we are talking about, the pressure on the pastor's wife. That's what I'm And that pressure can come from everywhere, anywhere. Because family, if you are a Pentecost branch, a example, I don't know, a Pentecost branch, a. Yeah, yeah women don't work. So, church of Pentecost, the wives. So you see, so I'm saying that family, you see, so it, it's a lot of issues we are talking about. Oh. Family can give you suggestions. Pressures don't normally come even from the society as a whole. It starts from the family. You understand? It, it's something that will happen. You, you can be an orthodox man of God and gain fame. It, it's all over the place. So yeah. the wife of that orthodox man who has gained fame, what happens to her? You think she doesn't go under pressure because mm -hmm. there are structures? <laughs> the, the, the structure is in place to protect the church. Not the woman. Yeah, this is okay. the truth. Yeah. The structures yeah. are not there to protect the woman. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. will you allow your wife to work if she one day comes to you and says to you that I've applied for? She's a working. Job? His wife is working. No, I mean another. Job, you mean corporate like, work? Yes, corporate work. You know, my, my principles are defined in my home. I don't want a woman who works in a corporate institution because of my purpose. My wife understands that. Okay. So it's basic. It won't even come up for discussion. Okay. You understand? Because the, the, the idea of going to work basically will be for money, isn't it? Mm. If she can then, do that and you pay her. And then, or maybe for socialization. So, so this is, this is where ah. some, some people will feel that I have, I have a gift, I have a talent. Mm. I love to work in the corporate world. It's mm. been a dream for me. Now, my husband says, because I am married to him as a pastor, and these are his principles. His principles, not my principles. Mm. I can't do it. The problem is foundational. Did you know you were marrying a man of God? What was the communication 
in the beginning? What understanding was put in place? For you, when your, husband, your wife, you and your wife were getting married, you were not a man of God. Mm, I wasn't a man so of God. So probably she wants to, she probably, not, I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm saying probably she'll say that, listen, I've always yearned to work in the bank. As a child, I've dreamt of My it. My wife has I went to in school. the bank. Yes, so what if she wants to go back? That's what I'm saying, that in the beginning, everything begins and ends at where it starts from. When the, when the vision and the purpose is clear as to where we are going, those issues will not come up. For example, these things happen when the vision and the purpose is not clear. The woman, I know a man of God, I know men of God, whose wives are rebelling today because they did not know that one, the man will become a man of God. Two, he will become that great. Three, they didn't think that level of speed will come. So that confusion is there. Then now they begin to find solace in their giftings. Okay, I'm good at accounting. Why don't I go and work in a firm while you are also busy? It comes back to the management of the home. But when the principles are clear, when it's clear from the foundation that, listen, we are having this ministerial work. This is where we are going. Mm -hmm. This is because you see, it's marriage before ministry. I said yeah. before, mm -hmm. it's that's not right. ministry before marriage. But why can't they work? Why? No, that's what I'm explaining to you. That it, 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 it depends on the individual. Exactly, it it's marriage individual before marriage. ministry. But we see that is work. Mom, see, who are not, who are not doing what Osofu is saying is work. She's still working. Yes, but that uh, my emphasis was: is she being rewarded? Yeah, that's because what I'm that adds to her her sense of security. And then her sense of, uh, 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 what do you call it? Fulfillment. Responsibilities. Fulf fulfillment and being able to do her responsibilities, like taking care of a family, things. Yeah, that that's what necessary. I established earlier on. That uh -huh. I don't believe, even a drama in my ministry, I give you something. I don't believe in God bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, okay. I preach about this. Let me take it out of you and go into general. Yeah. You marry a man of God. It's not you. Mm -hmm. A man of God. Now, you probably were working. You can't work again because you are Safuma. I mean, this is what he's saying, that mm. as a wife, you are working for me, I'll pay you. Then problem strikes. It can be that you're on the verge of divorce. What happens to your career? You've sacrificed your career 20 years down the line. You haven't worked. Where do you start from? Where do you pick the broken pieces from? Because you have decided to dedicate your life to the man. So when it comes to marriage, okay, where the dynamics change is when... It's a pastor, but marriage, divorce all the time, and some women sacrifice all the time. Whether yeah. pastor, but, but today, or not, today is about pastors' are, wife. Well, what I'm trying to say is that it is, it is, it is. Um, how do I say? It is a, a, a problem or an issue that will arise. And when it arises like that, there is nothing the Sofu Mami can do than to pick up the pieces of her life, like any ordinary woman out there who has divorced the, the husband and sacrificed her career. For the for, for for the family, it was a personal decision she made. No, no, no. Do it's you not get a personal it? decision. So that, that's where the difference is. The personal yeah. decision is when I'm not marrying a pastor and we decide and I say I'm. But when you yes, have a man it's of still God, a personal decision. no. When you Where's have me? a man of God who says to you that these are my principles, my wife is not working. My wife will have to be the asafo mommy. My wife will have to manage the church. The church will take care of you. And God forbid something happens down the line. What happens to you? Yeah, there are some churches that have the principle that if the pastor is leaving the pastor's wife, there are some churches like that. I don't know about other churches, but there are some churches like that 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 principle is there. So as an also for mommy, you have to be also wise as a serpent, okay? <laughs> mm. So that now that you know that these are the possibilities that can come in the marriage, what am I doing to secure, to secure myself, myself to, yeah. to, to secure my children, yeah. to secure um, if, if these eventualities will happen. That's why we have insurance. You know, I mean, that's why we have <laughs> insurance. <laughs> you know, so I'm not saying that she has to be um, mm -hmm. devious or she mm -hmm. has to be scheming or she has to be wicked, but she has to be wise. So if your husband is saying, don't work as an also for mommy, what is it in, like? What what am I gaining from it? What mm. am I what am I going to do? Let's sit down. What would the church give me? Let's put down a contract. You know, we play. Yes, mm. we play with some of these <laughs> things, and we think it's okay. But mm. at the end of the day, mm. it is the woman that suffers the most mm. because yeah. uh, and it affects one children. of my one of the topics that I wanted to raise is the fact that. The pastor's wife does a lot, yet the church doesn't ap appreciate the pastor's oh, wife. Yeah. We have pastors' appreciation days. 
in charismatic churches, yet we don't have pastors' wives' appreciation day. And most of the seed that come, they give the seed to the man and leave the woman. Whilst it, 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 there is a lot of sacrifices that goes <laughs> into <laughs> behind the pastor's wife. Hey, this is you know, <laughs> so I think that this is a very good topic. Yeah. And the woman has to put in, when your voice is heard as a pastor's wife, mm. you need to put certain things in place. You know, we have some past ma men of God that's, that died, unfortunately, and they built a big church, and yeah. yet their families are not being taken care mm. of mm. because yeah. the man is mm. not that's there. Right. Mm. That's right. It was another thing you I was know, going to talk about. And so if you are the pastor's wife, and, and so far I will plead with you, <laughs> I, I, as a pastor, yes. I think you need to put in some laws and some contracts that yes. without you, those laws and oh, contracts right. will still work wife and will cover your family. Yeah. And that comes in where the pastor needs to cover his wife at all times. Mm. Because you are the protector first. Okay? If the, if, if the marriage is first before the ministry, meaning that you protect your wife first mm. before you protect your ministry. Nobody dare talks to your wife. Nobody dare disrespect your wife. Nobody dares to say anything that will make the woman feel less of himself or, or less of herself. And then... You, you tend to agree with them, you know, especially if you think your wife is being rebellious. And because of that, an elder comes to see you and say, um, so, for, so um, this is your wife thing, what are we going to do? Immediately, you shut that elder down. It is putting your authority down and also your wife's authority. I mean, the question I want to ask mm -hmm. Prophet Daniel, yeah. okay, I think we have to open the phone lines first, but I want to ask Prophet Daniel a question. Mm. Uh, the, the Bible talks about the fact that... Um, God would bring a woman to the man mm. as a helpmate. Mm. So when we say a helpmate, in mm. this sense, because if um, your wife only has, let's say, the ministry to be working on and is only getting monies from that or getting funds or, you know, something to, for her upkeep and other stuff from just the ministry, none other thing. If you say helpmate, in your definition or in your understanding, what roles exactly does your wife come in to help you so, or uh, support you? So helpmates is basically equal strength, capacity, and abilities. If I ask you to help me raise this table and you don't have a the measure strength. of strength almost at my level, we can lift it up. Okay. Do you understand? So it will go like this. But helpmate is somebody who has that capability and that capacity to hold that same vision to where it's going. That's where sometimes we miss it and say, oh, we are equal, we are equal. The idea is not in human equality, it's in purpose equality. So that if I say one day that I am not well, or I need to rest, my wife can take over the role I was playing and execute it perfectly to the glory of the, call, the caller, not the court the glory of Jesus Christ, the one we are working for. You understand? So the, the roles would depend, again, on the swath of the lady, not necessarily my, my wife, but the lady, the, the Asafo mommy. The, the role that you would define would depend on the strength, the weaknesses, the opportunities she can bring, and then the threat around. Some men, they desire a married woman, demonically. That is the, that is the fantasies of some men. Some people desire a pastor's wife. So you need to build bridges <laughs> and then you need to build fences to protect certain areas of your life and the marriage. Then the rules can come in. But the helpmate is to become successful to the call and to the purpose and where we are going together. So for example, if, like I said before, there are times that I'm not on Zoom that my wife takes over Zoom yeah. services. Yeah. You see them, yeah, you get more them. than notifications. Yeah. Sometimes my leaders, even I, the ministers on the, on the, on the Zoom platform. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, for me, I'm, I'm not really interested in, funny enough, I'm not interested in the stage and the, the, the fame, etc. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just comes naturally. But I'm interested in impact. Whoever will bring that impact. And that's why I hold a lot of conferences and put a lot of other men of God on it. I'm looking at impact. So the role should be impactive to the people we are called for. 
You understand? Right. Uh, that, is, that is just what it is. Hmm. We have a first caller on the line. I have a question after that. The, the caller tells us, do. you know, yes. <laughs> Mommy, you're calling us from Labadi. How are you? Hi, my name is Mami. I'm calling from Taifa. Oh, Taifa, rather. Okay, Mami, talk to us. Right. So I want to find out from the male pastor, why is it that all the Prophet time... Prophet Echo Daniel, that's his name. Prophet Daniel, yes. yes. I want to find out why they always choose to marry the most beautiful women in the church. <laughs> and then when there are issues, they, they, they want to blame it on the women as uh, is their fault. Mm. You are, you are, you marry somebody who is so beautiful, she can't help it but to dress, she can't help it but to look good, she can't help it but to be herself, and yet you want her to wake up at 12 midnight, and when she can't, you are complaining. So, so if I got that question right, is she talking about physique beauty? I, I think, think that's what she means. Yeah. But I think she's trying to say that why do the men of God marry physique beauty yeah. and then not their ability? So that if they are failing in their abilities, then now you are blaming the woman. So, of course, uh, some people are not oriented right to marriage. Yeah. We've discussed these things mm -hmm. before. They are not oriented mm -hmm. right to marriage. Marriage is not about the physique. Again, it's about the purpose, where you are going. Yeah. The thing about men of God, again, is that the truth is that we often, even though we are looking at the abilities and the capabilities or the capacity of the woman and what she can do. Physique plays a role. Because you see, church grows and numbers come in. And sometimes the defense mindset is that if I have a wife who looks a certain way, then I may not be tempted to look elsewhere. To look elsewhere. Mm. No, no, no. See, <laughs> No, see, I, I agree. No, that, 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 that is so why. Have it's you true. seen wives and have no, you seen I, 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 No, 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 no. What no, you I, say? I, 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 I agree. They I are agree. beautiful <laughs> women. See the husband's side chick. I, you see, see so, this so, woman, his eyes are closed. <laughs> so you see, that is no. That is why they choose in that that perspective. Yeah. Because the hope, it's it's a hopeful it's a hope choice. It's a hope. Or hope. You see, it's a hopeful hope. choice. Is that we may not transgress. Yeah. So that this beauty would hold us. However, what will hold you is not the physique. It's not the beauty. Because the physique the beauty will, will hold if, you. If, when children come in, it's a different ball game. You understand? When, when business come in, it's a different ball game. So my dear caller, the choosing is not really as if, oh, we want to marry, but, but of course, who is even the most beautiful woman? You understand? It's not like we want to marry the most physique beautiful woman. We, the, most men of God do that. Most men of God. Let me be very clear. So you don't say most men of God do that as a hope of defense system. You see, now that defense does not always stand. No, I'm saying that. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying also, that. Also, I'm saying it will stand. Also, why I agree with you. Yes. But you see, the beauty God is looking for. He said it comes from the inside. Yeah. But it's not it's, oh, is it mommy? No, we, listen, are, we are addressing no, I, 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 I agree. Mommy, we have another mommy, point. Yes, 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 I agree with you. you. Yes, yes, but you see, what attracts the man always to another woman? It's not always a physical thing. No, mommy, but you see, we are addressing somebody's question. Okay. It's a caller's question that we are addressing. So why are they choosing? Yes, so they end up still sleeping with other women. No, no, but you see, so that is the question that why do they make that choice? So people can have ugly wives uh, to say excuse me say maybe uh, in an ugly wife as you call it beautiful and still cheat so the issue uh, is not about whether the woman is beautiful or uh, ugly so we are saying that has it roots exactly that's what i'm addressing that okay. the issues of choosing a physically beautiful person mm -hmm. is a hopeful choice that's what i'm saying it's a hopeful choice Where hopes okay can always okay so we have <laughs> our next caller on the line hello vida hello, good morning good morning Vida, um, can you please speak out for a, me? Okay, please. I have a very sensitive issue. Eh? Okay. I'm asking on behalf of a friend, and she's going through this now. Wow. So she started, um, she started ministry with her husband for twenty, say, twenty years ago. They started broke, and by the grace of God, they've been able to reach somewhere. The church is sitting almost five hundred per service and run services so it's a huge church but the issue is that she's being abused in the house by the man of god 
Is that oh. one? She's abused. Been abused. Mm. She's being abused and she's asking to step out of the marriage. Now she's considering the reputation of the pastor and herself. Yeah. And she's and the truth is she doesn't know where she is because now what is she going out? So my question is, is she in the right to demand her remittance once she steps out of the marriage? Mm. And two, is she in the right to demand that we give her the respect because her sweat has gone into this. Mm. We give her the, the needed respect as as an also for money. Hmm. Thank this you, Vida. Thank you very much. This thing, yeah. <laughs> this is deep. So, so, so it, it brings us back to what we were saying. Yeah. Where, you know, you don't wish it happen, but in case the unfortunate happens, where, you know, there's divorce or something, Sometimes you, the woman, you are the one tainted black because you yes. know what? Everybody in the church is <laughs> the pastor. Pastor, pastor. pastor can do no pastor wrong. Can do no wrong. Huh. So you become the enemy of the church. Yeah. So how do you go to the church and tell the church, give me remittance? So you, you see, you don't even get remittance from the church. Again, the ministry is different from marriage. This woman is yeah. not abused in ministry. She's abused she's in marriage. She's abused in marriage. Yeah. We, we have to always draw that line. But so, she's working in the No, I'm coming. Ministry. So I said, so you, hold on. So you see, the ministry is not where her problem is. Mm. Her the problem marriage. is marital problem. Mm -hmm. And in marriage, you are being abused. You are being, you are, you are, you are giving pain and agony in marriage. And she's asking that, it, should she leave, will she be given any remittances? Of course, in marriage, by law, if you separate, the law will fight for you in marriage. Prophet, let me take you back her, to your her, words. Mm. I will take you to your words. Mm. My wife works for me and the ministry. Yes. It, it, it won't happen. Mm. But let's say another pastor, similar, mm. works for me and my ministry, mm. and there's divorce. Mm. What happens? Because the divorce has happened. Is she going to come back to the church? The church that she has divorced, the man of God? So when, when they say divorce, they are claims, isn't it? There are claims. So you go to the law court and there are claims of the wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, we started this, this ministry. Yeah. And then we, we married at this point. It's been 20 years. Out of the 20 years, we've made A, B, C, D. The law looks at it and says, okay, in the ministry and in the marriage, what has come out of it? <laughs> so she's that, gone back to the church already. It belongs to God. So, so, so the marriage <laughs> has given, you know, its own. But the church, because she was working, working for the church, the, church, yeah. the church didn't have a choice but to do that. But then again, it boils back to the same thing of you becoming the enemy of the church as the asa for marriage. Yes. Let me come in. You see, I have a foundation, and the foundation is a domestic violence uh, a, a crisis response center, especially like also for you see the marriage, the church. It's like any other marriage. The principles for a Christian home applies to everybody, yes. including the pastor yes. Yes. and then any other Christian. Exactly. Home. Yeah. But when it comes to the issue of abuse, you see, it's been studies have proved over time that in most uh, areas where these abuse are taking place has to do with uh, a work that has authority, like yeah. the pastor, a security lawyers. Those, yeah. That's where the abuse is taking mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I have power over you because it's about power play. This mm -hmm. is not marital conflict. Mm -hmm. Marital conflict can always be solved mm -hmm. and managed. You see, in a marriage, we, we all move as a team, but we must also learn to individualize ourselves. Yes. I remember when uh, Mama Idahosa was having crisis, she told us herself. And then one of the advice uh, that, uh, Osborne gave to her was that, told Papa Idahosa, carry your wife along with you, yeah. you see. So you need to also learn how to, as the, like the pastor is saying, you have to learn how to carry your wife. If you are getting to a certain level, you must also make sure she's also being built up yeah. to meet up. Then the along. insecurity and all those things. But like mm -hmm. she, the question she's coming up with, if you are in the marriage now and there's abuse, abuse is satanic. Mm. That one ran for your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's and it's marriage. always oh, that's the head. Yeah. That one yeah, ran for your life and look for help. Head. But I understand, <laughs> also, you see, I understand what she's saying. Don't forget the person is famous. That's where the power plays. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you, can just, you cannot just walk out mm. like that. When you walk out, 
He has the microphone. He can say anything. Everybody yeah. will believe him. Mm. Yeah. Now you, and uh, abuse is always like that. How yeah. do you explain yourself for people to even understand, understand. and hear you? Yeah. It becomes a problem. So for her, if she has to make a decision, you need a lot of counseling mm. and guidance. You must be, because the two of them, the pastor and she, they have to find a way to put them together for the sake of their church. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Reverend. Yeah, so we have, we have another call on the line. Uh, you're calling us from Medina, James. Good yeah. morning. Uh, I'm really enjoying the show this morning. <laughs> Thank and you. Very, very, very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so I have a question. I have a friend who is a pastor, right? And uh, he's married to another friend of mine. Unfortunately, he, he cheats on the woman. When when I tried to find from him why he does that, what he told him was, he's a tough one, but yes, he's a human being. Once he takes up the attire, you know, it's a human it's being. A yeah, yeah. You know, I, I really want to know why it is that way. And is it really true that if a man of God and he take off the rope or whatever they call it, to become a human being, <laughs> any a human being that, and such a man, and cheat on the woman, this man is a very serious cheat. Oh, wow. And I don't know. Should I tell the wife, the sort of man, what she does? Oh, or should I mind my business? Okay. Wow. So it seems that uh, the man is defined by his clothing. That's so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that shows that shows the sort of person he is. I don't think he's an also for papa. Uh -huh. Anyway, apart from that, I don't think he's a good man. Mm -hmm. Because any man that is married, first mm -hmm. of all, is faithful. So whether you are an also for or not, not exactly. the faithful part of the marriage, being committed to the yeah. marriage, it should be there. Yeah. So a uh, Subhan Boni. Mm. <laughs> it's just Subhan Boni. Should, should, should he tell the, the wife? What do you think? Um, if 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 you're a man and you are vulnerable to that, I think you should tell. Don't tell wife. me anything. No, he's, 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 the, the gentleman. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to know. Change. Don't tell me anything. Don't come and put me through any trauma. You mean the other? The caller is saying he's the one seeing that the man is cheating. That's the wife. I'm sure the wife knows. Don't tell. But she has nothing to stand on. Why do you want to go into somebody's marriage and discuss? The I'm fidelity sure the of it. Knows. What a, he think feels the, like he wants who, to help. Hey, 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 okay, okay, the question is, <laughs> okay. you are the yeah, helper. Rosalind, helper. Rosalind, the question is, what if maybe the person he's cheating with happens to have certain sicknesses? Oh. No, but you see, you see because he didn't bring it that up, he's saying that his interest is, is the cheating is his problem. And he's saying that, should I tell the wife? Because and as my a man issue is of God, as a pastor, yes, for my the rules, rules, exactly. That's, <laughs> a, that's what I'm going to say. The, the woman is aware. The woman knows. Yeah, woman are smart. smart. Oh. 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 Women are smart. Oh. What are you saying? Men too oh. are oh. very good with hiding No, 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 no. Women are good at hiding. Men are not. They can't beat women. No, women know. You know. They can't beat women. They cannot beat They cannot beat women. Exactly. We, we do high things very well. Exactly. Yeah, but the wife knows. The, the, the wife might know, but probably is enjoying the fame. You know, some yeah. women don't want to even address issues as it should be. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, I counseled, there was one time a woman called me, and a high-profile pastor's wife. And she was like, oh, so mommy, you are the only person I can tell this. The two of them agreed that the man will go and befriend a particular rich woman in the church. Wow. So he can bring the money home. A business. So this, this one, a business. They are doing business. So she's very much aware what was going on. Now at a point, the pastor was not stopping. Yeah. It was going so far. <laughs> Or say, I feel so, mommy, I'm tired. I want oh. to get out. I said, No, you started this thing mm. and you agreed. Stay on in it and deal with now it. Now you have to have, find a way to solve yeah. these things. You see, this issue of ministry, mm. <laughs> we have to define it very well. Yeah. Right. You see, it's church right. is you, mm. yeah, yeah. not the building sitting there. Yes. And your marriage and your, your career and your everything has to do with you and God. Yeah. And you are going to give account to, mm. you see, like uh, last Saturday, the women we awarded, some are 90, some are 85, wow. some, and, oh, yes, and they were walking, wow. walking, shim, 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 <laughs> like that. <laughs> they don't even have microphones, but they are making impact. Mm. Yeah. Some have prayed through the seasons, you see. So it's not only about, uh, you'll be shocked, the trumpet sound, this microphone thing, and all oh, this. Mm. In fact, Jesus yeah. said it. Jesus yeah. said it. He said, you come before me and I'll tell you, I don't know I you. I don't know you. It's different thing when you say you know God, and God is telling you, either I know you uh, or I don't know you. Yeah, so we have another uh, caller uh, calling from a shaman. 
Kojo. Good morning, Kojo. Good morning. Good morning. Good yes, morning. Kojo. Good us. morning. Please, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can please. Hear we you. can hear you. Please talk to us. Nice one. Please, I have a question now. And I'm very happy uh, we have to live after Monday. So let's say my wife is a pastor. And her being a pastor, she has to be there for the men at all times. This is a case I'm with my wife. In the midnight, we are having this night. And a member called my wife, who is a pastor. <laughs> the morning, I need a help, I need prayer. Well, we are having this night. So my wife, who is the pastor, Pick the call and attend to the member. That's my question. Please, can I take this question? Yes, okay. please. Okay. As a pastor, you need to define your boundaries. Like any other company, they have their open hours and they have their closing hours. As a pastor, you need to define boundaries. And at the end of the day, it will help you and it will help your family. And it will, it will furthermore even help other people appreciate you more. Mm. Because somebody will say, hey, the other time I called him at 12, he picked me. Every time when I call him, he will not pick. You know, so if people know that this and this is, are my times that are open for you, of course, there are some times that emergencies can come. But in as much as possible, you should put some measures in place that will also shield you. Like if there's an emergency for prayer or uh, pray, praying, you can direct to a single man that doesn't have any obligation anywhere. You know, you can direct it to him. There is always a way to manage the ministry so that everybody is okay mm. in the ministry. There's something I want to add to this. Is uh, she spoken very well? on that matter. Men of God, we need to train people or teach people right. not to depend on us. Yes. yes. This is the, As in the member. Yes. yes. Yeah. This is the foundation. Yeah. Teach people not to depend on you. Let them depend on the source of your assignment. That's right. If you train people in that manner, mm. those kind of calls, you will hardly get them. Mm. You see, but when you become, uh, uh, when you create this gratification of self grandiose around you, mm. you feel like you are the God. Yeah. In the beginning, you will enjoy it. But with time, these pressures will come. Yeah. And it won't stop because you've made them believe that without you, nothing mm. can be solved. Mm -hmm. you see? So this is where the crisis come in. Mm. Again, foundationally. Let them know that I am not Jesus Christ. Exactly. I am not the God who created yes. me. I am not the Holy Spirit. I am only a medium. <laughs> when I'm going to sleep mm -hmm. sometimes, my, my people will tell you. I tell them, 10 p.m. I put my phone off. And then I put it back on at 8 p.m. 8 a.m. maybe. You will call me, you won't get me. And I'll tell my wife, if anybody calls you, tell them I'm sleeping. Mm. You understand? And my phone is off. Yeah. If you cannot depend on Christ Jesus, but I am your source of dependency. You are in a big problem. Yeah. You are lost. Yeah. I think I have a, a question. Is ch church is a business, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no. you see, church is a human institution. Yes. So it must be run corporately. Yes. Good. That one, that you have to train people and get professionals to do yeah. that. So Whilst the pastors and the full-timers do their assignment True. with the word and prayer. Okay. So it's Excellent. not a business. It's a business. Which, which no. kind of business? It's no, it's, 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 it's God's business. It's not a business. Let's know. It's we, God's we have business. To know which kind no, of what business. she's trying to say, mm -hmm. I, I can say it because like a business. church is not a business because we are not in for the profit. For, for making our, money, yeah. our profit is to see souls um, so sworn is to make sure that you have numbers. So is that what it, it, Rosalind, is, not Rosalind, not is that what you were saying? Your book, book. Because you have so, so you see, like because of their money. It, it, it's no, not it's about fair. numbers. Okay, so I no. think that the fact that some there are some few people that are looking for numbers doesn't mm -hmm. mean that is Cuts the core foundation. Are there few? Yes. Because it looks like those who want the numbers are more than no, those who no, 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 core no. foundation. You know, sometimes, no. sometimes bad. When something is bad, it's loud. So we think that it is, that is it, like mm. that's the, the, the norm. No, sometimes good things is like bad news travels fast and it's loud. So it's there. But there are good people who are not looking at the numbers, who are really down at the core. What we see are those on TV. No. 
The numbers, so the numbers issue. What, what, we have because to find even out. recently, evangelism we have, is. We have, you have, we, to, you have, have to some men of God. So we need them. Men of God or women and women of God who have cried because their church numbers have dwindled because they are on TV. They got access to TV, and you heard it. No, I did an interview. Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. So my thing is that. See, let's they be cried. real. I don't understand. Let's be real. They cried let, let, let's be real. Let's be yeah. real. Everything we do, we look at it in a profitable way. God has called me to call people to his side. It's not about winning one soul. I want to win 10. I want to win 20. I want mm -hmm. to win 100. It is a business. You need to put in the strategies to be able to achieve that. What do you do to make sure that these people that you have are not even being lost to the world? It's all strategic, so it becomes a business. It's not about no. just the money that's coming in, but you ought to be strategic about it. Listen, so this is it. You see, the way we perceive church, we have the human perception and we have the kingdom perception. The fact that as human as we are, we, we, we are, we are uh, myopic in, our, in, 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 in dealing with some of these things. So myopic means... The fact that I have the numbers mean that I am winning souls. <laughs> and there is somebody, and God is not looking at your numbers. God is looking at your impact. How many people are So that, that's what I'm trying to say. The fact that the human institution or the human, or humans as we are, we are looking at numbers, doesn't mean that is how it's supposed to be. Mm. Okay, so now what we and need to do... there's nothing wrong with looking at numbers, though. Rosalind, 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 Rosalind is looking... You see, he planted his son, and he's looking for the whole world. Yes, yeah. yeah. there's nothing wrong so, with looking for numbers. But yeah. I think that what she's yeah, trying think, to say... I think you know, that's not what, what I'm trying to What maybe we should define is... Yes. You know what how... What kind of business are you asking? Mm. What, because in business, there are different tangents to mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. The question of is church a business... What kind of business are you interested in knowing? Mm -hmm. So let's let define that business. Then we can answer that question. So the business are in different angles. There's yes. a business of you making sure that what you have started succeeds. Uh -huh. And that is winning numbers mm -hmm. into the church, mm -hmm. coming to the winning of souls. Mm. Then as you're winning the numbers, let's not forget that as we are here, we will not go to the watch seller and say, Holy Spirit bless you. And so you take the watch and go. So are you asking monetary money. business? It's all part of it. So I win the souls. Mm. And as you know, we said... We, we started somewhere, we've gotten somewhere. Listen, the richer you get, you know that God has blessed you. You know what I mean? Yes. So, uh, yes. yes. Part of it. Yes. So yes, it is part of it. So is it a business? Because those who have managed it well, put systems in place well, have been able to succeed, won a lot of souls for Christ because they've put the right managerial systems in place. A lot of big churches in Ghana here have the CEOs, they have the board of directors and all of that. If it's not business, how do we have all these things there? Because the structures are there and it's working. So, so, so you see. Uh, okay, let, let's take some comments. We'll come to okay. that one anyway. See what comments. I'm loving what was going. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, you ladies. Uh, looking so sumptuous. You're making my Christmas already. Thank you. I'm loving this show. Prime morning is the best. Hello, Isidua. Please ask your guest that is it a must for me as a woman to be extremely religious? before marrying a man of God, is it possible for him to do what he's passionate about whilst I also go about my own things? Is it possible? Okay, next one. Hello, Joy Prime. This is an interesting topic. I am the wife of a pastor, and truly I feel burdened by the many criticism from church members. The members want to look good and yet feel I am spending their church money when I try <laughs> to look good too. Others also advise me not to repeat clothing to maintain my status. And when I try to listen to myself, they say I don't respect. I know a woman of God who has actually been through this. Yeah. I know a woman, uh, as, as a woman who has been through this. <laughs> if she looks good <laughs> and comes to church... There's a problem. There's a problem. You, you, know, you the are spending our, that, our offering money. The what do you mean? Is, you know, what she does too is, yeah, she comes in early. Yeah. But there's when a lot of us are seated. A lot of them are seated in the church. That is when Asa for Mami comes in. So she gets the attention mm. of everybody whilst coming mm. in. So, yeah, you get enough time to look at, okay, yeah, so this one, hey, look. Look at her hairstyle. Look at this and all that. Mm. And then before I realized, what, because it was happening a lot of time, people started saying that, Odi Asa Risika. Rosalind, this is, is a calling. No. Using, this is a calling. Mm. Uh -huh. Rosalind, this is a calling. <laughs> and then being supporting a pastor is a spiritual work. 
But at the same time, people are looking at certain physical things. And you must be on top of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you've got a bit of Yes. But you know that it was that, yeah. uh, it was that <laughs> offering money the, the, she used to. And there's something I want to say. Talk. People will always <laughs> there, there, talk. There's something I want to say. People I want to say two things, right? Yeah. First of all, the fact that she's a wife. Are you saying that my wife shouldn't look good? Exactly. Outside ministry. So you're saying that if I was a banker and my wife should be looking oh, ug ugly because the oh, banks, the <laughs> bank now me age my woman. No. Mm -hmm. My wife is looking good because I'm stealing the bank's <laughs> money. Yeah. So the problem is the perception of the members. Mm. Yes. What are they being taught? Mm. What are they being told? The, their understanding is even wrong because my wife is first again my wife before ministry. Yes. And see, if I was doing any other job, my wife would look beautiful. Me, if I was doing any other job, I would look good. Mm -hmm. You understand? I, wouldn't, I don't have to look good because I'm a man of God. I like to look good. That is the, that is the foundation of the matter, <laughs> you see. And the other aspect of a church, a business, you see. <laughs> <laughs> there is that, that I want to clarify it so people yeah. who didn't because, because get this yes, is, yeah. Yeah, this yes, what you people see, actually do think you see, it is. So we what I do for a living mm -hmm. as a pastor, it's not a borrowed job. It's not like somebody has done if you're a pastor, it's like you who more bobby now where you're soft. Being a pastor is a full-time job. The same way somebody is a journalist or a banker, it's a full-time job. That is what I do for a living. Now, I don't account to a human being. I account to God, Psalm 51. The funny thing about Christianity is that they praise the people who wrote the Bible who were equally doing certain ungodly things. But the people who are alive today, they chastise them. Mm. Because the ones in the Bible are dead. So Africanism, they praise the dead. Psalm 51, the man who wrote Psalm 51, David, he said that, I have not sinned against men. It is you I have sinned against God. You know when he was writing that? After he has killed somebody's husband. Yeah. But the man is writing and telling you that after that act, I am accounting to God. What am I saying? There's business aspect to everything in life because money runs ministry. Facts. Money runs ministry. Facts. Now, if I put my money, I told you I do other things to make money. Yeah. If I put my money in raising billboards and doing stuff, I'm working. That's my job. That's, mm -hmm. that's my career. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's my profession. I'm working. So when I'm working, you, how do you expect us to maintain and grow and impact? How do you expect us to do that? Mm -hmm. So the church can't talk about finances because when the church talks about finances or the man of God, talk, oh, he likes money. Yes, yes. So, so, so who, who likes poverty? We have to be real. <laughs> exactly. So, so who likes poverty? I, 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 who, who likes poverty? Who likes poverty? You see, the only person who has money and people have problems is a man of God. Yes. When a yes. man of God has money yes. or he dresses well or he yes. buys a good car, oh, this guy is a fraud. Yeah. yeah. But every other bank manager or lawyer or, or top journalists, it's okay for yeah, them to... Mm -hmm. You see, so then we have... It's not about the profession, right? It's not about the person. People have problem with the office of the man of God. It's, it's God exactly. they don't like. Mm. Yeah. It's God they don't like. Yeah. You see, it, it's the spirit they are attacking, yeah. not the man. Mm. Because if that same man was a bank manager, they, wouldn't, they have no problem. No. But also, also, if that's the same man... Sometimes, too, the way other ministers... Sorry to cut you, I mm. think you're part of but the way sometimes some of the ministers are managing things mm. and the kind of preachings that we preach to the people and we do different things. Mm. You want people to show hospitality. You want people to be given. You want people to be Mommy, supported. I, I'm not cutting you. Nobody <laughs> does hospitality than the church. I'm no, I agree you. with Nobody. you, Osofo. Mm. Osofo, I agree with you. People hide it. Mm. Osofo, many people I agree hide with it. You. I think Muslims don't know about hospitality. Yes, you see, I agree Sorry. with you. Muslims people beat us to it, though. You see, uh, some do. people I don't, don't I agree blow with their trumpet. Yes. I know men of God yes. who are schooling over thousands of people. Yes. Who are, but, who are, who are, people who, I'm telling it. you, who are accommodating many homeless So people. then it comes back to the same thing that we are talking about. If church is a business, 
I'm not saying Wait. that it's, see, when, no, Rosalind, Wait. when you put it, I'm not saying a that business, it's a business business. I, there is there, okay. a business there's aspect a business of it. Aspect of Good. Church. Uh -huh. church so if church is a business Trust aspect a of business it. Has a business aspect of it. <laughs> has a business Let, aspect of it. Yeah. Okay. Why can't we permit our Asafo Mahamis mm -hmm. to work, to work, to be themselves? God has called you. You are accountable to God. Allow the woman that you married. Maybe you married a woman who has a gifting that behind the scenes she'll support you and all of that. Mm -hmm. Advise you business wise. But when it comes to the preaching wise, when it comes to managing human beings, she's not good at it. Why can't we allow them to be who they are? Because, you know, Rosalind, they are can the Queen of England be who she, like when she was alive, can she be who she was? Can she be who she was? Yes. Before she became a But she wasn't, a, she wasn't married to. A, a she was no no what what i'm trying to say is this she was born every a queen. role she was born a queen and i may say every role comes with responsibilities okay unless you say that this thing that i'm doing imagine seeing mama rebecca acting a uh, going on tiktok and dancing oh we saw Michelle Minita. obama doing it <laughs> Michelle obama did it what and did i make her say was no no she, but, because, but she has broken a lot of rules as, yes. as, as yes, a so, first lady yes so you can you know and she has done it so well that now society sees it as a norm, a norm. A norm. can we so, do that so that our no, wife Rosalind, are so the issue of, of accountability of, yes. Rosalind, the issue of accountability it's we are both accounta beings. accountable to god and also accountable to men mm. yes. because men must approve you mm -hmm. as a minister the work look when you go outside you don't wait for god to come and uh, account for you the press there will get you accountable I, I remember in 2006, I went to London, interviewed Ashimo Lode. He had written a book. And then they were raising funds, and there was an issue that came up. It was the press. Because as for us, we see it as a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, you pay taxes. You are licensed. You are gazetted. So in, in both ways, as we account to God, there are other people. You also have a team, like you were saying, board of directors. Board of, it's supposed to help you to also account. So if all these things are properly in place and the man of God is doing something, that means he's doing the right thing. Mm. You understand? That, because his board will hold him accountable mm. unless that board is not a correct board. And mm. So if yes. you marry any yeah. woman out there, the woman will compliment you, maybe not in pastoral wise, mm. but in other things. Yes, yeah, she can. She's a fantastic she mother. She's a fantastic wife. But maybe she's not that kind of woman who can prophesy or yeah. stand on a pulpit yeah. and yeah. preach or manage people. Yeah. Yeah. Can we allow them to enjoy that? I have married a pastor. Oh, they are, they are, they are, they are there. They are there. <laughs> they are there. You see, this they is the topic there. that we are talking about. See, they the, are, topic they are pastors, is, the topic has to do with the women. vital mm. pressures yes. on Asafo Mahami. Yes. And that is it. So how many do we have? Can we allow them? Can society permit such people to still be the wives of the husbands of pastors and not be too judgmental on them? So you see, Rosalind, it's, it begins again from the teachings of the church itself. You see, I came to meet a church, but I said I was not a Christian. I came to meet a church or a Christian fraternity where many things I used to hear when I was not a Christian, I come in here, I see them and I'm shocked. <laughs> and I'm surprised. And I'm like, wait, so how are you doing what you are doing? And how are you managing what you're managing? Meanwhile, the communication is a different ball game. You see, we need to be real and make people be themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I, anybody, see that's why, you see when you come to my church, you see the kind of people in my church, uh, they are my kind, they are my type, they understand me. <laughs> They understand exactly what we are yeah. doing. They understand. So when you put people in that orientation, mm. that listen, it is me God has called. Right. Maybe not my wife. My wife is a banker. I know men of God whose wives are doctors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's clearly defined. Yeah. She's doing amazing as a yeah. doctor. There's nothing that, you know, tempers with that. It, it works. It is there. But the thing is that, you see, because the, the people whose are working are not even voicing out. You will think that, oh, there's nothing like that there. The orientation.